Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be looking at the expected value, the variance and the standard deviation of the binomial distribution. So we've previously looked at how to calculate these three and you may have seen just general formulas and so I want to emphasize that you still can use these. So for example for the expected value you can use EX is equal to the, square, uh, the sum of uh, X times the probability of X equals X and just to quickly remind you of this formula, basically what they're saying is that you're timesing each outcome by its probability and then summing them all together. Uh, such also with the variance, you have the variance of x is equal to uh, so var expected x squared. That's uh, so all the x terms, the outcomes squared, and then the expected from then minus the expected value of x squared. So you've seen that before and if you remember the standard deviation is equal to the square root of variance and standard deviation has that symbol there and the expected value there. However with the binomial distribution there is a quicker way to calculate which is very useful and I'll show you what this is now. So if you remember with the binomial you have the n, uh, p and q. So P is a probability of the successful outcomes and equals the number of trials and Q equals a probability of um, anything that's not P. It's also like the inverse of so 1 minus P. So the expected value of X is equal to NP. Now if you watched the video about the graphical representations, you'll see this is how I calculated the expected value. It's what happens is when you times a number of trials times a probability of success. And this is like this makes logical sense. If you had uh, 10 trials and the probability of success was 30%, then your expected number would be 10 times 0 0.3, which would just equal 3. So that's really useful. Now the variance of x is equal to n times p times q. Now you don't really need to understand why this is the case, you just need to remember it. So n times p times q. Another way you can think about it is n times p times 1 minus p. Therefore, as we know, standard deviation is a square root of variance, so standard deviation is equal to square root of n p q. And you have to be really useful, uh, careful, sorry, because standard deviation is used a lot more than variance, uh, so, but to calculate standard deviation, you often have to calculate variance. So make sure you remember to square root it. Just quickly with some notation-wise, sometimes a binomial distribution can be represented like this. And so that's basically x, that's notation, and then bi represents a binomial. You put the n, which is a number of trials, and then you put p there, which is a probability of success. Yeah. So we go into a question just to show this. So the main thing with these three formulas is just to memorize them. Uh, and normally it's good to sort of be able to know why and it's really good if you can. However, in this case, it often is just knowing these three formulas, th those three formulas. Okay. So, question. 100 students are selected at random. If 60% of students do maths, then what is the expected number of students who do math from this group, so from the 100 students? So we can automatically see that. Uh, 100 students, n equals 100. 60% of students do math, p equals 0 0.6. And it's re we count that as a success as we want to know people who do math. So what is the expected number? So expected number is that, which is the mean, which is EX. And if you remember from the formula, EX is equal to NP, which equals 100 times 0 0.6, which equals 60. So, as it's a worded question, you probably do want to give a worded answer. Therefore, um, the expected number of students is 60. Yeah. So, if we just... Yeah, so the next part. So 100 students are selected at random. Um, if 60% of students do maths, then what is the variance and standard deviation of this distribution? 
So we've already calculated that n equals 100, p equals 0 0.6. Now we need to work out what q is. Well, q is equal to 1 minus p, which is equal to 1 minus 0 0.6, so it equals 0 0.4. Okay. So now we can work out the variance. So the variance of x is equal to n p q. So that is 100 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.4. And that gives us 24. So the variance of this distribution is 24. But we also have to calculate the standard deviation. So if you remember the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the variance. So it equals the square root of 24. Uh, now if you're on the calculator and decimal places, this is approximate to 4.9. However, if you didn't have the calculator or it say, doesn't say decimal places and you have to put it as the actual value. So you could take out uh, 4 as a common factor, uh, not, not as a common factor, but you could take out 4 as a square root, which would give us uh, 2. Two square root six. So then we've calculated both of these. Yeah. So thirdly, calculate uh, uh, the mean plus or minus two de standard deviations and describe what this range represents. Well, we have the mean plus or minus two standard deviations. Now we know that the mean is equal to one hundred times 0 0.6, which we've calculated before, so that is obviously 60. And then we just calculated the standard deviation before, if you remember, which was 2 square root 6. So we can sub that in, 2 square root 6. And then we have 60 plus or minus 4 square root 6. Now, if you wanted to give this actual values, then 4 square root 6 is about 9 points. 7.9, 9.8, which would give us about uh, 50.2 to 69.8. However, we can leave it in this expected form, assuming it's a calc-free question. It doesn't say decimal places. But the real part of this question is, what does this value represent? Now, an important thing to know is that the mean the way that the standard deviation is calculated means that the mean plus or minus two standard deviations is approximate to 95% of, um, like 95% probability that it lies within this range. So what this means is if we apply it to the question that uh, if we selected a group from random, then so like if we select a group uh, of 100 students, which was the question, so 100 students, then 95% like of the time, uh, 60 plus or minus uh, 4 square root 6, or you can say it as 6, um, actually calculate the value, or blah, like uh, the 52 to sort of uh, 69 of of the time system to that of students will do math. So if we select a group of 100 students, then 95% of the time, that range of students will do maths. And so that's quite important to remember that uh, the mean plus or minus two standardizations is approximately 95%. So you may have to calculate it and it's not always exact, but it is a good sort of approximation. The other one is also that the mean plus or minus one standard deviation is approximate is approximate to sixty eight percent. Right, well, hopefully you can now calculate that for the binomial distribution and with the other videos as well. Right, we're nearly finished with calculating them, and you should be able to tackle most of the binomial distribution questions.